What a piece of junk! Hello Star Wars fans and welcome to the follow-up to the Micro Galaxy Squadron Millennium Falcon aka Micro Machines Falcon I always call these Micro Machines and this is the model Falcon that I mentioned in that review that I made 30 years ago and it came out 40 years ago, about 40 years ago. I bought this in the early 90s but uh, the original one I believe was released in 79. It's by MPC, a model company. And I first fell in love with Star Wars back in the early 90s. So I had no Star Wars merch at all. But after watching the original trilogy a couple of times, like most kids who grew up on Star Wars back in the uh, 80s, late 70s and early 80s, I really wanted to have a piece of it in my home. But there was no Star Wars merch on the shelves and there was no uh, toy shows you couldn't even buy vintage star wars toys at the comic shops in kitchener waterloo ontario there was no ebay there's no amazon there's just no way to get it um, unless you were lucky at a garage sale so models were the only option and i picked up a couple of models back then and back when i had a lot more patience and dexterity <laughs> with my uh and coordination with my fingers I, um, I actually made this model and I mentioned in this review for this Falcon as detailed as this is it's still a toy so you don't have to be careful with it you can fly it around it actually has the motion activated um, sound feature to it lights and sounds it's a toy it's a really highly detailed toy way more detailed than most toys but it's still a toy that you can drop and hopefully not break. But concessions had to be made. And one of them, uh, even though this is better than some of the Kenner Falcons, the cockpit is still oversized. Um, this isn't really screen accurate. There's no turret on the bottom at all. And uh, the big Millennium Falcon, which I got in the back there, has a really oversized cockpit. But the advantage of this beauty right here, this old hunk of junk, is that it is pretty much 100% screen accurate. In terms of screen accuracy, I've never seen a Falcon that was more accurate than this. And big reason for that is the bottom turret. It actually has the bottom turret, which uh, whew, moves. It's a little squeaky. I think it's the first time I've tried to move it in maybe 20 years. And um, inside there, can actually pull the gun off and it's hard to light but uh, with the help of a flashlight oh yeah you can see the uh, the chair in there so these models are not painted at all nothing's pre-colored you have to paint everything so every little rust spot I've painted the engines uh, definitely not screen accurate I definitely don't give a rap as President Roosevelt would say President Roosevelt was once shot during a speech and said, I don't give a rap about being shot. I'm going to finish my speech. So I don't give a rap about screen accuracy. I just wanted it to not be this regular color, but inside the chair was painted little teeny tiny red tips to the handles. And then over on the other side, same thing on the top. So the Falcon had two gun turrets with clear plastic in there. And this is uh, pretty dusty. And this is one of the few uh, collectibles that I've never cleaned and never will. Because the Millennium Falcon is uh, just a ship that the dirtier and more worn it gets, the more authentic it looks. And I look inside the cockpit. Just a couple of different colors back there to look like a computer panel so being a model everything was supposed to be glued in place in this thing and be permanent but I wanted to have a little bit of variety available even back then so I made this thing right here removable I'm gonna actually just pop right out there it's meant to be glued in there but I want it removable so that I could I guess take a look at that or maybe have a 3PO and R2 standing in behind possibly it did come with a couple of little miniature figures. It came with a Han Chewie, I believe a Farm Boy Luke too. 
uh, which all needed to be painted and they didn't look too good and I don't think my paint job was great either so I actually used some of these Galoob Star Wars uh, Action Fleet Micro Machine figures I think they look fantastic and they're just held in there with sticky tack too it just fits right in there and this was also supposed to be permanently glued on top of there but what I ended up doing was I cut see this lip right here I ended up chopping it with an exacto knife on either side and then I left a gap in between the clear windshield and the uh, the body of the cockpit and with that little gap it can just fit right over top of that ridge that lip and uh, got a removable cockpit cover there so you can get at your figures and um, in addition to some of the paint applications that I've added onto it I've added some scoring and instead of using paint to do the scoring or uh, like a black wash these score marks I particularly like them they look like actual authentic laser blast score marks because I used a lighter and the technique that I used I just figured it out on my own way back in the day I took a lighter and you just flick your bick but instead of taking a lighter to your toy or your model or, or whatever in order to give it these score marks uh, you run the risk of melting the thing there is an area right right up here um, that if you just quickly touch it yeah, I just did it right there see this little kind of score mark on this plastic cover of some spray can I had that's a tricky technique but um, there is an area which if you just quickly kiss it you won't burn the plastic ah that's a great one right there you get a great looking score mark right there and the um, downside of that is that it's not as permanent as paint or marker uh, so if you touch it it'll wipe off it's, it's it's a little durable but you see how easily it wipes wipes off which uh, you know I know I'm in the minority or I usually am in terms of stuff like this but uh, I don't mind that I don't mind a score mark that will come off because it just seems more like a realistic score mark and as I've wiped off some of these score marks over the years I think it's only added to the to the look of this model I think it's just given it a more authentic looking wear and tear paint job than uh, I ever would have been able to do if it was intentional uh, the back part I went with this um, baby blue look to it I did try I remember originally a uh, clear blue and it looked bad because it's so dark in there and there's it doesn't light up that uh, I just felt like going with the light blue made it look more like it was lit up and another action feature of this um, supposed to be permanently everything glued in place model is that the landing gear comes down can't remember if this was intended to be permanently down or if um, I just ended up rigging this so that it could go up and down but that's another really highly detailed spot and uh, I'll give you a, a look at the landing gear underneath which makes me realize that the landing gear on the big Millennium Falcon is not screen accurate uh, it's just got a ton of landing gear in order to hold its girth up whereas uh, this right here is it's more accurate to the movie Falcon I would imagine it's just got three feet on it even though the cockpit on this micro galaxy Falcon is a lot better than the cockpit on the big Millennium Falcon which is extremely oversized in order to hold four figures uh, the cockpit on the model Falcon is still way more screen accurate here's a look at uh, even though the model uh, Falcon doesn't have four seats so some advantages to it and some negatives to it but uh, there's a comparison so 
The figures are pretty much the same size. So if the Falcon is supposed to be this size compared to this size of a human, then the humans in the uh, micro galaxy squadron Falcon um, are too big for its for this Falcon. If you're a stickler for for scale, so as detailed and as nice as this looks, um, the people are still just a bit too big, but. I mean, seriously, how much smaller could they get? They're tiny. And uh, putting these two side by side like this as a comparison, again, makes me think that the wash is a bit much, and I know it's very easy to take off. And maybe one day I will do that, um, remove some of the excess wash, but it it's a little overboard just comparing them side by side. I love the amount of wear and tear and score marks and rust on the model falcon i have here and then this just looks like it rolled around in the mud it looks like it's been through a really bad day um, same thing with the smugglers run falcon when they reissued this big millennium falcon the big difference was they added tons of wa uh, wash dirt wash to it and it's it's a little excessive for me i think it distracts from some of the uh, details. This is all glued together, being a model. All glued, and that's... Uh, the glues today are way better than they used to be. I remember having to hold parts together for several minutes, hoping that they would hold. Um, crazy glue is not ideal when you're working on a model. Model glue is is better. But I can see, as the years have gone by, some of that glue is kind of yellowed, which uh, is fine by me again. I mean, the grimier the Falcon looks, and just in terms of natural age type of wear and tear, it just seems right with a Falcon. And the final little, I guess, play feature that this model Falcon has is uh, the radar dish actually moves around. So that's awesome. In addition to the turrets moving, and this actually moves like this too. The dish moves around. And I remember I colored the dish a dark color. I think because it was, I saw it darker in a picture, in, maybe in Star Wars magazine. I painted it and I hated it. And I was not able, you can kind of see it peeking through the lighter paint that I used here. The dark gray that I used and I really hated it and I couldn't strip it. I uh, seem to remember trying to use like rubbing alcohol to get it off and I just couldn't get it off. So I ended up just uh, taking whatever white I had and painting it and then scoring it up. And so again, not screen accurate. Again, I don't give a rap sometimes about screen accuracy. I just care what it looks like to me and I think that looks awesome and to close off here is a side-by-side -side of the big Millennium Falcon with the MPC model of the Millennium Falcon and once again everything is in the shadow of the big Millennium Falcon but you can see I mean wow that when you compare them side by side the real thing the screen accurate one compared to the uh, the toy Millennium Falcon that is really oversized compared to its radar dish. Go over to the uh, screen accurate one and the uh, cockpit is so tiny. But other than the oversized cockpit, this makes me realize just how uh, accurate to the screen the big Millennium Falcon is. There's so many details I'm seeing in the model that are carried over onto the big Falcon few things enlarged, elongated, but it's really, really, uh, really packed with detail, this big one, without too many concessions other than the, uh, the big cartoony looking cockpit. And that's a look at my vintage Star Wars Millennium Falcon model. And you can still get these model kits. I don't know if they're uh, making them anymore, but I just did a quick look on eBay and they've 
got uh, original, unopened, unassembled, MPC, as well as other companies' model kits of the Falcon for not that much money. And also for other vintage shows too, like Hardcastle and McCormick's Coyote or Magnum P.I.'s Ferrari. Uh, they don't go for all that much money because it, it is a lot of work. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of concentration. Probably a lot of frustration too, especially... If you're getting up there in years and your dexterity isn't what it used to be or your eyesight too, that's another problem that uh, you encounter as the years go by. Is it worth it? I, I don't know. <laughs> I certainly uh, really, really enjoyed making all the models I did back in the 90s. I did an X-Wing as well. I did a Slave 1. Not all of my models have survived. But uh, I made sure to take extra care of this one whenever it got moved around or stored. So uh, it's really cool to be able to have this Falcon that I built by my hand 30 years ago. But uh, in terms of doing it today, um, I don't know if I've got the time or the patience or the skill to do it anymore. But it is a, it's a really cool project if, if you do have the time. And uh, it's almost like a, like a meditation type of thing. I mean, if you don't want to just sit there and meditate if that seems too boring to you and you're not much of a book reader which i feel like is also a form of meditation just sitting quietly and reading a book if you don't like yoga or you don't want to do yoga um, model making is definitely another really quiet calming introspective exercise that you can do so uh, if you've never tried it before get an easy one a small one and just give it a shot maybe in an A-Wing or something like, like that. Um, it might just be right up your alley. And then you really get a lot of satisfaction when you're done. Because um, unlike doing a painting, which might turn out not looking anything like what you wanted it to look like or a drawing, you get a model that, um, what's the worst that can happen? I mean, it still basically looks like it was supposed to look on the picture. Maybe just not the paint job you wanted, but... Uh, the form of it is still, you're guided by, uh, by all of the, the pieces and the way they're supposed to fit together. So thanks for checking the video out. also wanted to say thanks to all of the recent folks who have joined the Patreon tribe. I really appreciate you showing your support and joining up. And also thanks to everyone who uh, has been with the Patreon tribe. Um, some of you have been there for years, some right from the very beginning. and just want to say how much I appreciate that uh, you've uh, supported what I do here. Thank you so much. And the channel panel members, people who have hit the join button, appreciate you supporting the channel as well. And everyone who watches the videos on YouTube and hits like or share, I want to say thank you as well for uh, showing your support for the channel as well. So until next time, Remember, models are just for display. They are not meant for play. May the force stay with you.